It was the biggest uh, Ethereum uh, data center. And uh, aside of providing the, the, the hash power for the network, we are also focused in education. So uh, in the last consensus network, we, we make like this, this fun protest, like bankers against blockchain. So yeah, we are focusing provide the structure necessary for, for the blockchain and also educate people about right. Bitcoin. So that, that was quite the pitch. <laughs> Thanks for that, Paolo. And uh, next we have Vitaly. Yeah, hi, my name is Vitaly. I'm a UK executive at CEX.io. We are a crypto exchange uh, since 2013. The root of the company is from, maybe someone of you knows, the uh, project called ghash.io, uh, which once been one of the biggest mining pools in the world. Uh, back in 2013, we've started the exchange, and uh, yeah, now we are pretty big, user-friendly and fiat-friendly exchange. Brilliant, thank you so much. And next we have Ed Carlton, last but not least. Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, my name's Ed Carlton. Uh, my job title is Head of OTC Trading and also ICO Listings at BlockX. Uh, BlockX, we are an exchange, but we are a digital asset exchange in that we are set up and designed to support the entire life cycle of a complete suite of blockchain-based digital assets. Thank you. So uh, we had some pretty fine questions, but I'm going to mix it up a bit. Um, I think in the audience, from what I've heard earlier, there's a lot of people wondering about um, this blockchain stuff. Everyone's talking about it. Is it relevant to my business? Um, what would you say are the requirements for a company uh, to adopt blockchain technology? What can they gain from it, if anything? And should every company out there use blockchain, essentially. That's what everyone's wondering about. So feel free to go in any order, and I, I think the sound engineer will open the correct mics. Okay, well, Cassius, you want to start? Yeah, I guess if, if I'm happy to start with this. Um, the short answer to that question is not all businesses should use blockchain technology. Um, fundamentally, it has a lot of great use cases, but there's plenty of use cases where it's more than irrelevant. It's not a force multiplier. Um, you have to consider that in any kind of like product or business that when you add new technology or new features, they need looking after. So the issue is that the market is, is rife. And so people look at blockchain technology as the next dot com, dot com boom, which it, you know, it may well could be. But it doesn't mean that you have to implement it for the sake of implementation. There's plenty of use cases where it's irrelevant. Um, and there's also plenty where you know, it gives you that, that kind of like cutting edge and that, that lead in the market. Um, but one thing I would say is that don't sandwich in blockchain technology for the sake of sandwiching in blockchain technology because it's not useful. It doesn't do much. If your goal is to raise money, there are better, cleaner, and safer ways to raise money than to simply add blockchain technology and to issue your own token or coin. Um, that would be a, a really short way of answering that. Uh, I don't want to take too oh, much time, so I'll let someone else chime in as well. What about the guys running the exchanges? You must see quite a few companies, obviously, uh, running in crypto. What do you think? Yeah, so uh, again, regarding the ICOs, for example, so what we saw last year, that uh, blockchain is obviously a powerful technology and it has a lot of use cases. But unfortunately, on the market, there were too many bad actors or just people who wanted to raise money in a simple and easy way uh, that were trying to implement blockchain where it's not applicable, actually. And uh, there are a lot of projects after their ICOs just thinking about all the, okay, now we think about where we use the blockchain. We have a token, it's may, it might be listed somewhere. But um, coming back to the question, actually, y y you should consider twice whether the blockchain at this stage is an applicable technology for your particular business, for your particular use case. Makes sense. Um, we got also Ed um, from BlockX. Um, what do you think, since you're also an exchange? I mean, to reiterate a lot of what has already been said, completely mm -hmm. agree. Um, I think you know, the key word which has been used a lot here is technology, and the business or the user case has to be technology focused. Mm -hmm. And we have to see you know, what is you know, blockchain technology as a silo and how that can then be applied to the business. Um, you know, let, let's put a, a positive on this because there's been a lot of kind of no's, but you know, in certain cases, yeah, absolutely blockchain is, is a massive driver for a business and, and can be, but only if the technology is leading the way. It can't be, you know, reversed engineered. Um, at, at BlockX, we have a, an ICO platform as part of our exchange, and so we see a lot of 
companies and projects coming to us, um, looking to an ICO, and unfortunately we do see a lot of people shoehorning in, in, in blockchain um, without either realizing that you know, there are a lot of existing technologies out there, so database solutions which work perfectly well, if not better, uh, and also you know, looking forward, uh, we have blockchain technologies, but we also have you know, to be mindful of you know, Hashgraph, DAG, and some of the other the, uh, you know, gossip protocols that we, out there, which, you know, so it's not always um, blockchain is, is this kind of holy grail answer to all those solutions. My thread use, I mean, it seems you're all echoing each other. Anyone disagree with the sort of that viewpoint, guys? Paolo, perhaps? Yeah, or? I believe that uh, the key word here is considering. Every business should consider a blockchain solution. However, I was reading a, a research few weeks ago that 22% uh, of the companies are developing some blockchain solution and 28% are considering a blockchain solution. Uh, however, we, other, other uh, report mentioned from Gartner this time mentioned that in 20, uh, 2025, only 10% of the companies will have some value using blockchain. So there is this buzz around the world, blockchain. Uh, however, we have to think like a blockchain is a decentralized database. For what do you need a decentralized database? So there is specific cases that you need a decentralized database. If you need many companies, individuals through writing this database and you need a, a trustable data, then you need a database. But answering the question, yes, they should consider a blockchain solution. Reduce. Um doesn't seem fair that we didn't hear from Norbert. Maybe you want to add something, or do you agree with all the other guys? Uh, I believe that blockchain should not be applied to every industry, but uh, every industry should be able to consider it. So I believe that there should be solutions, the infrastructure solutions for each industry to really easily and accessibly uh, use smart contracts in the industry and uh, the applicable uh, the, the usage of, uh, of blockchain should be left for the entrepreneurs to decide if they see the uh, chance to use it or not. And can, I, can, I just sure. add, can I just add on top of that? I think it's not just about the industries that should consider or not consider blockchain. It's also about the particular company because if you have a bulletproof procedures and processes in place, if you have a bulletproof IT infrastructure, but you are still a centralized company with centralized mm -hmm. databases. And maybe in your case, blockchain is just not the right time to do, rather than if you are kind of looking for to change something in your IT, blockchain might be just an option for you. Yes, Fred, I, I think a question that um, I, I hear tons of people asking these days is they don't understand the difference or the advantage of a public chain versus using a private chain um, that seems to come over and over again. It reminds me a little bit of you know in intranet versus extranet versus internet back in the days of you know 1993, beginning of the web. Um, what's your view on that in terms of what is the correct solution to use and in which um, scenario do you see a private chain being superior to a public one and vice versa? Maybe starting with yourself. I think. Uh, you know, it, it almost mimics some of the, uh, the response to whether or not to use blockchain. You know, it, it is very much, and sorry to use the, the cliche, horses for courses. I mean, I, I can think of a, a myriad of examples, especially in the traditional financial world where blockchain, a private blockchain would be applicable. You know, if there's certain trade data or personal information that's going to sit on a chain, uh, specifically that's his sensitive information, you know, I very, very strongly agree that it would not necessarily be practical or, or any business's interest to put that on, on, on a public chain. Now, you know, on the other side, if it's uh, another more open business, then, you know, a public chain um, can work just, just as well. And then we've also got to be mindful of the fact that you can still utilize a, a public chain, but with cryptography to ensure that that data which is transmitted, you know, through cryptographic hash functions, et cetera, so remains down, so it comes anonymous. Down to cost, essentially, what you're saying. Well, it's not just cost, no. no. I mean, it, it comes down to business drivers as well. You've got to, you know, listen to, to what is driving the bus. You know, majority of businesses will not just look at cost as their business driver. Um, I mean, okay, looking at a real world example with, with, uh, with BlockX, um, we are hopefully going to be entering into the FCA sandbox uh, for the issuance of private placement bonds on top of the blockchain. So 
you know, we are a business that utilizes blockchain. We're not a blockchain business. Uh, right. And you know, for, for that, we will utilize uh, a private blockchain, most likely Big Chain DB or something like that for, for this euro-denominated bond. Um, most of our clients that we spoke to have already intimated that you know, they, they would not be wishing their bond data to be put on a, on a public chain. Right. Now, I, actually, I, I hear you, and I think it's interesting. I was talking to a, an MP about two years ago, and I was um, explaining to him that because a business using, uses blockchain technology, maybe for the fact that it's auditable um, on a public chain, it's transparent, etc., I could be a, a florist for, you know, in the future. Um, that doesn't mean they're accepting cryptocurrency for their products. Um, so do you find that there is a lot of confusion around you know, what is a blockchain business, how to use the technology, does using the technology automatically means that you're accepting crypto, uh, and so on and so forth. Maybe uh, something for Norbert there. Um, I believe that people are uh, confused all the time about blockchain. The most uh, uh, of the time that I got talks about blockchain, I have to really uh, tell people what are the differences between blockchain, cryptocurrencies, tokens. And when they start to do that, when I say tokens, cryptocurrencies, they are mixed up. They are already gone. Mm. So uh, I think it's uh, more about educating people right now what are the differences. But I believe that you don't have to understand how the HTTP protocol works to, uh, to understand how internet works. So people just need the idea, but they don't need to go into the details. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Kasmi, you don't touch on that. You're, you're product designer, um, and so far, I've never, I mean, personally in my life, I've never seen a situation where you go on stage and there's potentially thousands of people talking about a technology, right? It's as if we were all here to talk about, say, SQL Server, Oracle. It's never happened. I've never seen it in, in 22 years of, of career. Um, how does that, what does that mean? Does it matter? Isn't it dangerous that people are suddenly so interested in the technology, but not necessarily the product, right? Um. I mean, yeah, so fundamentally, yeah, yeah. So fundamentally the, the main issue is with, when we look at adoption for, for anything, um, people use things fundamentally because they're better, faster, easier, cheaper. Essentially, getting the masses to adopt products is tricky because fundamentally, if they're not all of those things, then there's a lot of kind of like, you have to look at things from, People have priorities, and ultimately your mind is occupied all the time with whether or not you live in the inf information age or you're just a busy person. Things are trying to steal your time. So to turn around and to educate people into the space where, hey, here's all of these layers of abstraction which are really tricky to deal with in order for you to interact with something which you can already do, um, it's hard. It's why I'm very skeptical about how, how if ever, uh, cryptocurrency will replace fiat, because let's be real, fiat is faster, easier, and cheaper. You can walk to a cash point, you can get fiat money out, and you can give it to your friend, and that's it, debt settled. Um, the problem with cryptocurrency right now is that we're not there, and the, the same